Restoring a Bing Clockwork Train. This is part four. Reshaping the roof and front buffer beam, followed by the top coat of paint on the smoke box and chimney. In this clip I'm doing what I should have done a while back. I'm removing the brass whistle from the cab roof. If you've been watching the series and you watched the previous episode, you will notice that I skinned the cab roof using some cellulose putty. And now it's time to sand off most of the cellulose putty. I'm no great authority on paint work and preparation. I just apply a lot of common sense to whatever I do. In this episode, there's quite a lot of sanding and I know it's boring and very tedious, but if I have to do it, I think it's only fair that the viewers get to see it as well. To start with, I'm using a very coarse grit sandpaper. I think this is about 80 grit. By using this coarse grit sandpaper, the cellulose putty is being removed at a higher rate. Eventually though, I will have to come down the grades and go to a 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. I will probably say this once or twice in this video, I'm not looking for a perfect finish. Look at the rest of the engine, it's fairly horrible. So what I need to do is get a compromise between a really nice paint finish and a horrible paint finish. In this part of the clip I'm using my compressed air line to blow away all the dust. The sanding festival is not over yet though. I now have to use the 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper and I'm using it wet. If you use it dry, the paper clogs up very quickly. If you use it wet, it cuts more freely because the water content washes away all the small particles from the grit. Before I move on to the next part of the operation, once again I'm using the airline to blow all the dust off the main body of the engine. And now it's time to give the front buffer beam a similar treatment to the roof. This front buffer beam was fully bent back when I first got this engine. And I didn't show this on the video initially, I don't know why I did that, I just couldn't wait to start. And I used my barco spanner in conjunction with a couple of pairs of pliers to straighten the front. And it's not going to be perfect, but don't forget I'm not looking for anywhere near perfection on this job. At the moment I'm using a very small needle file to clean out the slot. This is where the front coupling goes. If you find yourself doing a job like this, always use the needle file early on in the rubbing down procedure. Do not rub the part down and then use the needle file because as you can see, the needle file has chipped the filler. Which at this stage is not a problem because I'm going to do quite a bit more rubbing down. What I'm doing in this clip is cleaning out the buffer holes and trimming the edges of the buffer beam with a small Proxon motor tool that I bought. This next section covers the painting of the chimney and smoke box. I've already given it one coat, but the painting procedure is a little bit unorthodox and I'm doing it this way for a reason. Let me explain. To paint the chimney and smoke box, I'm using a tin of Humbrol matte black paint. And when I gave the smoke box the first coat of paint, I did not stir the tin thoroughly like I'm doing at the moment. And I did this on purpose. I needed to get rid of some of the gloss paint in there and get a much thicker, gloopier mixture for the final coat. As far as I'm aware, most paints start out quite shiny and glossy, and then flatting agents are added to the paint, and whether the paint ends up gloss, satin or matte is down to the volume of flatting agent in the paint itself. And that's why the smoke box and the chimney currently looks quite shiny, even though it's matte paint. I'll just give the smoke box a little bit of a rub down. There's one or two hairs and bristles and things from a previous coat of paint. This had been painted before by the previous owner of the engine, many, many years ago, I would think. And the original paint applied to the smoke box was not matte paint, it was gloss. But it's gone very dull and matte with age. There's quite a lot of black paint underneath the front of the engine that's been applied at some time in the past, and this is quite shiny. But the paint on the top of the smoke box has definitely faded with age. And if you look at the paint at the moment that I'm applying, this is matte paint, it's going to dry very dull. But as it's still wet, it looks like gloss paint. And as you can see, it doesn't really fit in with the engine at all. You'll see what it ended up looking like in the next episode. I'll leave this clip as it is for the moment, just watching the paint dry. The next job is to apply some grey primer to the roof. This grey primer is out of an aerosol can. I just sprayed it into the lid and brushed it on. And as I've mentioned before, I do not want the paintwork to look good on this engine because the paintwork on the rest of the engine looks horrendous. It could be said to be age-related paint, so it's perfectly acceptable. I hadn't realised, but this was one of my special unpainting brushes, and accidentally I removed the paint. 
so I put the paintbrush into forward gear again and repainted the front. And after that brief moment of minor insanity, I think it's time to end this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.